18 days to go, so another day, um, and really not much happening. There is something very important happening, but you're not hearing a lot about it. But we'll start with uh, the elections. The first thing, like I said yesterday, was the first day of early voting. And I had to run to the post office around 10, 10.30. I don't know when the polls open, but the community center in the one city, that's where we're going to go vote. Um, that area was full, heavy traffic, and there was a line of people, quite a long line of people, waiting to go in and vote on the first day of early voting. So, <clears throat> whenever you see a reaction like this, that means the urgency of the vote is out there, that people are motivated to go as soon as possible to go and vote. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. And it is critical that no matter what you believe in or what you think, uh, voting in this election is, is critical to our country. Um, and it appears that most people uh, are reacting that way. No violence, no, no unrest. Actually, the uh, exact reverse. Um, there's so much uncertainty. People, I believe, are on edge. You don't see the fabricated uh, political unrest or civil unrest that there was prior to the last election. There is not a run on firearms. There is not a shortage of ammunition. Actually, the exact opposite is happening. Uh, sales are down. And, uh, you know, this, this isn't going... Uh, it isn't going like it was the last time. We're not having a craziness because this is a firearms champ. And we're not having the weird gun rush or anything else. Also, I believe there's an underlying feeling that everyone believes Trump's going to win this, no matter what. Uh, I mean, they've tried to push Harris, and, and they, they've done everything they could, but it still isn't working. Okay. So, about the only important thing that happened in the last 24 hours, I guess yesterday they called in a B-2 bomber. Uh, strike the stealth bombers uh, because I remember when I got out of the service working in a defense plant I did do some work at General Electric on the B-1 bomber where they only made a hundred of them and that's where the defense industry and working for these places went kind of went out of business because I forget how many B-52s we made, which are still flying to this day. You know, these are 70-year-old aircraft that are still flying. Um, and they say they might even go all the way to where their 100-year-old airframes up there in the air. Um, F-15s and 14s, 16s, all of these, they made thousands of these planes. Now, like the uh, B-2, they only made 40 of them, and I don't even know, that's about what they make of the uh, new ones, the F-22s and the F-35s. They only got like 40 of these planes operational. Um, so those days are over. But anyway, they sent the bombers to hit them in Yemen, which Yemen, Yemen is where they blew up the coal and a lot of terrorist things are run out of that country and I guess they had a B-2 bomber strike and supposedly hit the Hutus or whatever, whoever's down in there. Um, a critical strike. Which is making everyone kind of nervous because now this war in the Middle East looks like it's escalating. Really I don't know what's going on in Europe. You hear this and you hear that. But it's kind of stalemated. Um, there are, there is activity happening. There are 
strikes, missile strikes mostly, and things like this. It's it's down to a missile war, not so much ground troops. Um, and who knows what's really going on? But the big question is, people are asking, uh, with the way our government's being run, who the hell is in control? Who's making these decisions? You know, they say it's the president, but they say that he only works till 3 o'clock in the afternoon and two or three days a week at the White House. He's really not there, which leads to question who is really in control of our government? Who really does make the decisions to do these airstrikes and stuff? And I personally, I believe um, we've had a non-functional government since the beginning of this last administration. And it kind of, and it didn't happen overnight. Okay, it was kind of going over time through the Obama years and this and that. It's, it kind of is working its way there. Nothing happens immediately. Like, once the election's over, there's going to be some sort of a critical problem. And they will blame the new person elected for all of these problems. Okay, which is not really true. Because these problems and uh, what happens, you know, like I said, it don't happen overnight. It takes a long time and it's gradually built up by people behind the scenes manipulating things. Okay? And the problem is, with this current administration, it is way beyond obvious that whatever or whoever that is running this government okay, is not the people that we elected. Okay, this, this is the problem. Now the question is, and the question on everyone's mind is, if you have people that are not elected, that are in power and running things, people who have power, consolidate power, and do things like this, don't really want to give this up. Okay? And the question is, are they going to allow the elections to go through? That's the big thing on everyone's mind. Um, is there going to be someone blatantly trying to overthrow the government come up here? Okay. And the thing about Trump is, like him or not, is the people that are supporting him are going to try to thwart or change something in this plan because whenever one group consolidates power there's always certain people that are pushed out of power and the thing about all of these people elitist deep state whatever the hell you want to call them nobody likes hat losing that position and nobody likes when somebody gets too much power and starts telling them this is what is going to be, you know, and they get cut out, okay, they don't like it. So Trump kind of represents that other faction and all this behind the scenes crap. And, you know, it looks like if he does get elected, and it appears everyone is believing he will win this. Okay, it's gotten to the point now where, you know, he's going to win. And, and they're preparing. Wall Street, the financial things, everything else. So, <clears throat> we'll have to wait and see. If things would get better if he wins, um, you know, again, who knows? Maybe, maybe not. But I think it will be not as bad because, like I said, we have a dysfunctional government, okay? And there are people so corrupt that are running around doing things that go against the Constitution and it constantly, okay? 
somebody has to come in there and kind of steer the country to get it somewhat back to normal. Will it ever be like it was? Probably not. But somebody has to do something to stabilize things and then take it from there, see what happens. Okay, and I believe if Trump gets elected, that, that's probably going to happen. They have to do it. Okay, there's no choice because uh, God only knows what would happen if the people controlling things continue controlling with the power that they have. Yeah, so that's my thoughts on it. Uh, I got some repairs I have to do. My garage door broke. So I got to get somebody out to look at it. So I'm going to be busy today. Uh, I was going to make some more firearms videos. Uh, and I was planning on doing that today, but that's been thwarted. I have to get on the phone and make arrangements uh, to get some things done. But enjoy the rest of your day. Keep your fingers crossed. And, you know, if you can vote early, go vote early. And if not, if you live in a place where you have to go on uh, election day, please go out and vote. Because uh, truthfully, truthfully, if everyone that could vote voted, I would like to see really, okay, if this form of government works and if democracy, how, how it looks, you know, how it, how it works out. That is something that I'd like to see, you know. All right, guys, hit the like button, subscribe, and stay tuned.